Hi guys and welcome to another episode of Kabir Considers. In this video we're going to react to 10 American states that will rob you blind. So I'm guessing this is these are the states that are just hugely expensive in every way. So when it comes to buying a property, eating out, getting insurance, it, like any conceivable way they can get money out of you, I'm guessing these states just take it to the the nth degree. I'm, I'm assuming California, probably. New York, New York, probably. But other than those two, maybe Florida? I don't know, actually. Yeah, other than New York and California, I don't know what other states will actually be on this list. Today, we look at the states that will bleed you dry financially. These are the states that have the highest real estate prices, highest taxes, highest traffic ticket fees, highest parking fees, highest car registration highest fees, and everything. overall, high cost of living. These are the states that if they can charge you for something, they, they will. will. It's like at some point, these states forgot that they work for the people and they act like they're running a for-profit company that has a lot of very demanding investors. We created this list by ranking all the states in the most common ways that they use to get your cash. We threw them all together and came out with which ones are gonna screw you the most. And they're on this list. Now there was a whole bunch of stats and I'm only gonna tell you a couple of them that we found interesting as we go along because if I went through all the stats, it'd be quite tedious. It'd be like a statistics class. We will include how much the average single person needs to live comfortably in these states. You know, comfortably means bills are paid. You're not living in a 1980s Toyota hatchback. You can go on vacation. You could put some money away in savings and retirement, you know, comfortably. Got it, get it, good. Let's right. take a look. Maryland, okay. Number 10, Maryland. Ah, Maryland, you'd think- That's where Baltimore is, isn't it? I think my aunt lives around there. With its charming Chesapeake Bay and crab cakes, that this state would be a cozy little place to call home. Nope, instead it's a haven for folks that love paying some of the highest taxes around. Their actual tax burden is 9.3%. That's not the highest in the nation, that's 12%, and it's definitely not the lowest, which is only about 4%. From state income tax to property tax, the state just can't resist. The cost of living isn't shy either. Housing costs in Baltimore and the surrounding DC suburbs will have you scraping the bottom of your bank account just to survive. Jeez. Don't forget parking fees around the different cities and like around Annapolis. They practically charge you the privilege of putting your car in a spot that they'll probably tow you anyway. And let's not forget about the traffic. Maryland's infamous for those glorious soul-sucking traffic jams around the DC metro area. And Baltimore is no slouch either. If you survive the commute without getting slapped with one of their expensive traffic infraction fees, it's a miracle. The median home price... How much are the uh, traffic inf infraction fees? 50 bucks, 100 bucks, that sort of range? In Maryland right now, hovers around $433,000. But good okay. luck finding a decent place in those DC burbs without adding a couple more zeros to that number. Jesus. Welcome to Maryland, where your taxes are high, but your hopes and dreams, eh, not so much. The average person needs a salary of about $97,000 to live comfortably in Maryland. Mm. If you live around DC, that's gotta be like double. The average tax burden in Maryland is 9.3%. Is this over, like on top of a uh, federal tax or is it literally just 9.3%? So whatever you make 9.3%, that's all you pay in terms of tax. Cause if that's it, that's a lot lower than it is here. That's for sure. Connecticut. Number nine, Connecticut. Connecticut, where the rich get richer and everyone else just dreams about it. The state is home to some of the highest property taxes in the country, and they're proud of it, actually. Whether you're living in a charming colonial or a basic starter home, the state's ready to collect its cut. Median home prices in Connecticut sit around $436,000. That's second quarter 2024, by the way. Which that number isn't terrible for... A lot of New England states, when you add your sky high costs of utilities, groceries, and well, life, it gets up there. In cities like New Haven and Hartford, parking could cost you enough to make you consider walking everywhere. And you'll probably walk because their public transit in Connecticut isn't winning any awards. Traffic violations, the fines are hefty. So if you accidentally speed or rush to get to New York, because let's face it, half the state is trying to leave, prepare to open your wallet. Basically, Connecticut is perfect for people who love a challenge, especially if that challenge is staying in the black. The average tax burden in Connecticut 
is 10.1%. And an average single person needs a salary of about $105,000 to live comfortably in Connecticut. Mm. Keep in mind, they have some of the richest neighborhoods and small towns in the nation. So yeah, that 105 ain't gonna get you much in those places. Wow. Those, these salaries, like, see, some of you guys watching, it might not be a lot, but in England, very few people make six figures. I think we're probably talking like the top, maybe 5% of earners make six figures. I think top 10% is like 66K over here. I know, it's crazy. Number eight, Alaska. Surprised to see Alaska here? Don't be. Sure, it's remote and the cold is free, but everything else, oh boy, no. Groceries here cost an arm and a leg because they have to be flown in from somewhere warmer. Housing costs aren't as insane as some of the other states in the lower 48, but when you factor in heating bills and things like that, now the price starts adding up real quick. The median home price in Alaska is $377,000. That's not terrible. That's because they have a lot of small towns and a lot of wide open spaces where things aren't expensive. It's not uncommon to pay double that if you buy a house in and around Anchorage. And the taxes? Alaska may not have a state income tax, but don't get too comfy. The cost of living there is sky high, with residents paying premium prices on gas, utilities, and basic necessities. Parking fees in the city of Anchorage are a joke. If you manage to find a spot that doesn't cost an arm and a leg, consider it a rare win. But how is it so expensive to park when there's just so much space in Alaska? Like, why is property expensive too? Like, isn't Alaska, like, the largest state by far? Like, can't they just expand the state? I mean, the cities to make it cheaper, like, to build and... How is it expensive to live in Alaska? Oh, and don't get caught speeding on those icy roads. The fines are just as steep as the mountains. The good news is the average tax burden here is only 4.9%, which is the lowest in the nation. You can't really have high taxes in a state that hardly anyone wants to move to. It's a beautiful state, don't get me wrong, just not a lot of people want to go through all that just to live. The average single person needs a salary of about $106,000 a year to live comfortably in Alaska. It's wild. Number seven, Oregon. Yes, the state where I currently reside and I'll probably die here. You thought Oregon was all about trees, craft beer, and people just relaxing and doing weird stuff. We are, but and that's what people do here. But you know, they do other things. So think again, because it's got a wallet crushing cost of living, that will probably drive you crazy. Now that I think about it, that makes so much sense. Why we have so many weird people on the streets here. Their cost of living probably drove them insane. Portland might seem like a quirky dreamland until you realize wow. that you're paying half a million dollars for a vintage home that needs repairs every time it frickin' rains. The median home price sits around $511,000, and the parking fees downtown Portland could make you cry into your overpriced latte. Portland is where most of the people live. It is the most expensive place we have here. But other places like Salem, Eugene, all the way down to Ashland, uh, they're no slouch when it comes to costing you a fortune. I thought Portland, Oregon had tons of problems with like, uh, you know, users and, th and things like that. I guess that hasn't affected the prices there. Oh, and let's not forget the taxes. Oregon is one of the few states with no sales tax, but don't celebrate yet. They've been trying to change that for years. The good news is every time a politician makes a good run to change it so we have a sales tax, they don't win their next election. I've noticed that's a trend. So at least we're staying strong now, but it's just a matter of time. If you're watching this in like 2027, chances are we have a sales tax now. I mean, right now it's a state with no sales income tax, but our tax burden is still 8.4%. That's above average. They get us on our property tax, just about anything else. And God help you if you make too much money because then they give you an extra charge here in the Portland area to help house the homeless. Yeah, there's an extra tax to get people off the streets. I still don't understand wow. it, but it just sucks. And since we're talking about Oregon, the cost of owning a car, including those traffic infraction fees, is about as steep as Mount Hood. So if you're heading out west for some peace and quiet, don't forget to bring your wallet and maybe a second one. The average tax burden in Oregon is 8.4%. And the average single person needs about $114,000 to live comfortably in Oregon. Now, it should go without saying that, of course, in the cities, it's going to be more expensive than the rural areas. This is the average for the state. It's great that, you know, they're trying to get the homeless off the street, but you shouldn't make, you know, normal working people pay for that. Like, you shouldn't, like, having a separate tax, you know, it, man, seems a bit unfair. 
Number six, New Jersey. Ah, New Jersey, the garden state, where everything costs twice as much as it should. The median home price here is kind of ridiculous. It sits around $550,000. Now keep in mind, a lot of its cities are really run down and the state's average is still above 500,000. The only reason they're that expensive is it's close to New York City. And in New York City, it's a lot more for a place to stay. You might get a shoebox apartment for 550,000. And then there's the taxes. New Jersey's property taxes are among the highest in the nation. Combine that with high sales and income tax, and you'll wonder why anyone even bothers to live there. Their average tax burden is 10.1%. There's only a few states in the country that are higher. The average single person needs a salary or a annual income of about $117,000 to live comfortably in New Jersey. Man, $117,000, that's like £90,000, something like that. That's a lot, man. Not A lot of doctors, believe it or not, don't make 90 k here. Like, to make 90 k you've got to be an experienced, experienced doctor, like 10 plus years under your belt, or you're in cosmetics or something like that. Or you're a surgeon. Number five, Washington. Washington state is like the more mature brother to Oregon, except it's just as good at draining your wallet as Oregon is, especially Seattle. Seattle's median home price is obscene. It's only about $800,000, right? No biggie. You got that in your checking account. Let's get a house. The good news is the state average is much lower than that. It's still kind of high, but it's lower. It's at $615,000. That's what their median price is. The state's high cost of living also extends to groceries, utilities, and entertainment. I'm not sure where Starbucks falls into entertainment or utility or grocery with these people, but it's part of it. And while Washington doesn't have a state income tax, they make up for it with some of the highest sales taxes around. Don't even think about parking downtown Seattle without shelling out more than you're comfortable with. Registration is high there, traffic and fraction fees are pretty high, and their total tax burden is almost as bad as Oregon. Yeah, we really like our taxes here in Oregon. Whether you're dodging speed cameras or just trying to survive the 405 freeway, prepare to fork out some serious cash if you slip up in this state. They are unforgiving. The tax burden in Washington state is 8.4%, which is on the less. high side. I'd actually consider that the beginning of the high side. Um, higher ones are usually about... 8.5 to about 9.7. If you want to live comfortably in Washington state, yeah, you're probably gonna need about $123,000 annually. And if you're in Seattle, better bump that up to about 250,000. Not Good even joking. Grief. He has to be kidding. There's no way you need to make a quarter million dollars to live comfortably in Seattle. He's not serious about that, is he? That's That's a lot of money. Number four, New York. And here we are in New York, the crown jewel of expensive living. The median home price here, ah, it's close to $900,000, and that's if you're lucky. In Manhattan, it's laughable to even consider owning anything less than $1 million. And that's not even a house, that's like a two bedroom apartment for over a million dollars. Rent is astronomical, and those tiny apartments with character will have you questioning your life choices, but hey, at least you're in the Big Apple, right? Now the rest of the state isn't nearly as bad on housing as New York City is. The median home price for the state overall is only about $417,000, which I would say is reasonable. It's on the high side. The national average for the median home price is about $370,000, oh, so wow. it's not terribly bad. The taxes in New York State are unforgiving. And when you start adding the city and property taxes, that all stacks up. I was in New York City at the end of August, beginning of September. I was in Manhattan for the most part. Uh, I Yeah, I never lived there. I'd thought about it when I was younger. There's no way that city would drive me freaking crazy. At least when, I maybe it's because where I was born and raised, Los Angeles. Los Angeles is more laid out. So people aren't right on top of each other. And I know we're talking about the state, but I just want to bring this up about the city. A guy explained it to me perfectly. He said, living in New York City is like being in a classroom with 100 people. Living in Los Angeles is like being with the same 100 people, but now you're in the gymnasium. I thought, well, that makes sense. It's getting harder and harder for people to actually own an apartment or 
anything in New York City. I mean, most people are just happy they could afford a slice of pizza and not have to eat <laughs> Top Ramen. Now, this is one of the worst parts wow, about man. New York State. Your car, it drags you down. First of all, if you're in New York City, the cost of having a parking spot and everything else for your car is astronomical, so most people don't. Now, if you're upstate, the roads can be a nightmare, a lot of potholes, the weather changes. You have to do a lot of maintenance on your car, and it gets expensive. But, you know, that's the price of living in New York State. Myself, I think of all the places in New York that would be worth a very expensive cost of living is the Finger Lakes area. It's beautiful up there. Got to endure some rough winters, but still, the summers and spring are just amazing up there. Here's where New York really gets ugly. The average tax burden is 12%, meaning 12% of your income goes to the state of New York. If you want to live comfortably in the state of New York, it's about $126,000 a year. You want to live comfortably in New York City, you better add, I don't know, maybe at least another zero onto that. But I think Come you could pull it off pretty good for... 250, 300,000 a year. Doesn't that sound ridiculous? But that's the reality of living in New York City. I don't know. I don't know. Like when I was there, because I, I Googled it to rent like a two bed apartment in Dumbo, at least last year when I checked, I think it was like 4,000 US dollars, which is a lot of money. But that's 48K a year. Let's say utilities and bills, another, another 10K on top. Let's say 12K, let's round it up. So that's 60K, food and all that stuff. You probably need about 150K, something like that, as a single person. Obviously, between two people, you can kind of split it in two. But yeah, expensive city for sure, man. Expensive and really busy, like people everywhere. Number three, Massachusetts. Coming in at number three is Massachusetts, where everything costs more, but at least you get to freeze in style, right? Let's start with housing. And of course, we'll talk about the biggest city, Boston. Boston real estate is so expensive that you might just start seeing your future mortgage as your own personal nightmare. The median home price in Boston is about $580,000. Not as expensive as New York, but it's up there. Boston is expensive, it gets cold, it has too many tourists during the summer and spring. But if I ever got like transferred there for work, I wouldn't be upset. I think it'd be a pretty cool city to live in, at least for a while. Now, I've only been there, a, I don't know, three or four times in my life, the longest for about a week, so I'm not an expert on living in Boston. I'm sure the locals are gonna give us an earful down in the comment section, but that's just how, that's the vibe I got from the place. It's not that bad but it does cost a lot to live there. Taxes, oh, they've got those. The state income tax isn't as bad as some, but when you pile on the property tax, sales tax, and the fees for the privilege of parking anywhere near a Red Sox game, you're basically handing over your paycheck, at least once a year. Traffic tickets in Massachusetts are equally brutal. Don't ever think about speeding or running red light unless you're prepared to pay a fine that's big enough to fund Tom Brady's retirement. Now, Boston <laughs> does play a big part because it's not a very large state and Boston and the Boston metro area take up a good portion of the state. So obviously that's where like 80% of the people live. The average tax burden in Massachusetts is 8.6%, not terrible. That's mm. about the beginning of the expensive states. And you need about $131,000 to live comfortably in Massachusetts. I wouldn't have thought Boston would be a popular tourist destination. Like he, he said that, uh, you know, in the summer it's full of tourists. Like what are the main attractions in, in Boston? I genuinely don't know. Like, yeah, the, the, New, the New England Patriots. What else? Like what else? I, I'm genuinely asking. I'm not roasting Boston, I promise. Number California. two, California. Ha, anyone guess this one was going to be here? I mean, I thought it would be the bottom, like with Mississippi, Alabama, and West Virginia. It's yeah, like right. Everything's cheap there. Housing, you know, it's just so cheap the last couple months or so. It's incredible. I'm totally kidding. California is a freaking nightmare when it comes to your wallet. It's the land of the rich and famous and also the land of why is everything so expensive here? The median home price in the entire state, not just like San Francisco or Los Angeles, is about $850,000. Yeah, Woo. when you get down to San Francisco and Los Angeles, that everything's over a million dollars. But hey, at least you have endless sunshine and the chance to see a celebrity, right? Now, California is nuts when it comes to the DMV. I lived there for years. I've been to the DMV too many times. Besides the aggravation of actually going to the DMV, how much it costs to register your car and 
pay fines, get insurance. It's all ridiculously high. California has some of the highest DMV fees in the country. And the DMV is just an unpleasant place to visit. I was actually surprised when I moved to Oregon. I went into the DMV up here and was expecting to have the typical argument or getting some attitude. The girl was very nice, very pleasant, and very helpful. I went back another time since I've lived here in Oregon. Again, some man helped me. He was great. Every time I went to the DMV in California, Southern California especially, they were rude. And Dennis Miller put it perfectly. He said, everyone that works works there seems like they're going through a really bad divorce. The average tax burden in California <laughs> is 10.4%, which is the third highest in the nation. And the average income you need to live comfortably in California, about $148,000. Man, I know American salaries are bigger than they are here, but like how many people make over 120k in the US or even 100k proportionally like as a percentage? Would you say it's more than more than 30%? All right, before we get to number one, if you're thinking about moving to another state, there's a link for a website called Home and Money in the description area below. They can get you in touch with the real estate agent anywhere in the country. Also, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. It costs you nothing and give the video a big thumbs up if you liked what we're doing here. All right, on to number one. I'm surprised New York and Hawaii. And number one, Hawaii. Yes, paradise is expensive, not just for tourists. It's a financial disaster for most residents. Sure, the beaches are beautiful, but have you seen the grocery prices? Since everything has to be imported, a lot like Alaska, your typical grocery run is gonna set you back about as much as it costs a couple to get into Disneyland and spend the day, and that's expensive. The median home price in Hawaii hovers around $800,000. That's wow. the entire- Wow, how do people afford it? I mean, it must be full of rich people then, or people handing down the properties through like their kids, their kids, etc. 800K, that's a lot, man. The mortgage on that would be enormous, unless you're putting down like half a million. Our state, that's not just the cities like Honolulu or whatever. Honolulu is crazy expensive. Just like any state, the closer you get to the water, the more expensive it's going to be. There's also no state income tax relief here either, and the cost of utilities, transportation, and even parking will make you wonder if the ocean breeze is really worth it. Traffic and fraction fees are pretty high here also. It's just terribly expensive. Now, one thing I will say about the real estate, which I should have said earlier, I did find other reports that suggest that the median home price in Hawaii right now is a little over 900,000, like 920,000, but most have it around 800,000. Some people actually retire in Hawaii, which is nuts because 90% of retirees are trying to save money. You had to do really good with your money through the years to retire in Hawaii. Mm. If not, move there and this state will drain your coconut fund and you could say aloha to your savings. The average tax burden in Hawaii is 11.8% and to live comfortably, you need to make at least $176,000. If you live in a city like Honolulu, that's gonna be around 225,000. Wow. All right, that's to Good grief. Man, the amount of money you need to live in these states is just insane to me. I'm sure there's people doing it for less, but for the average to be like, you know, these numbers, there must be people obviously making a lot more, so that brings the average up, but still to to need to earn 176k to live in Hawaii is wild. Wild. I mean, that's about 130, 140,000 pounds. <laughs> I think if you gathered a hundred Brits in a room, maybe, maybe 10 of them might earn more than that. So huge, huge money for people, you know, in this country, in America, maybe, maybe it's different because salaries are higher, but I would still bet that 176k, not a lot of people are making that. Thanks for watching guys. If you enjoy my videos, please help me out by liking and subscribing.